This is the customer information screen tutorial, and we're going to go through the usage of the items on this screen. But before we get started, let me point out one thing. There are businesses that need to or want to collect customer information and their company information in a POS type of environment for point of sales. It depends on your needs whether or not this screen is important to you, but it is the primary screen that you're going to be using as far as dropping information into an invoice, for example. So if I wanted to do only one action in this screen, it would be to create what is called a walk-in client's uh, record. And what I would do is I come up to where it says customer name, and I would do the number one, a space, and I'd put in walk-in client. And what this does, it gives you the ability later on, if you grow your business and you want to try to capture client information for be, being uh, sales and marketing things like offering special sales or coupons or a whole bunch of different things you want to do with clients, then you might start taking the information that's here, like for example, emails and telephone numbers and addresses and stuff like that, that gives you the ability to contact your clients whenever you need to. And the information down here would be a business type of arrangement, you could also have a individual in a business at the top who's the main contact and then the business information below. For example, a lot of point of sales applications are in like a hardware business where you have people that come in and you want to track some information from them to be able to notify them when you have a special or something in that vein. Okay, let's go back up and look at the, we did start with the application menu, which you're going to be using throughout any part of the screens that you go to. And you'll notice that there's a few names of buttons or, or screens here. There's sales, inventory, and purchasing. Well, these are what I call express buttons, where they take you to those screens, and they're primary screens that are related to the customer. Or and or if they're on a screen like that, or they're, they're going to allow you to navigate a little quicker than going ahead and using the main menu options, because you have to look through them. Uh, in this case, sales, where you're going to do an invoice that is based on a client information. You may pop over here to add information and go right back into the sales screen. The next thing is inventory. You may want to check your inventory from the main screen when you're making notes down here. Maybe a customer is looking for a particular thing. And if your business has something coming in and you have re rotating retail stuff, they may want to leave a message in the box down here saying what they're looking for. And then purchases, where you go for purchase orders and setting up things that you want to buy for your store. This little drop down here is the creation date. If you put this up, it'll pop up a calendar so you can put the creation date for this client, which gives you an idea who's coming into your business and when did they start giving you information about their, their what their needs are and what they may want to have. The next thing is an ID for the individual records. This is the customer ID, the CID, and this will change each time you add a new customer. Now, why? Because each one of these is called a parent record for the, for the client. A lot of stuff that happens after this may be related to the customer and the customer information. We're using this ID in a relational database to identify this customer to other screens that you fill in information within or you're going to pick the customer or the walk-in client, as I talked about, where you have one record in here for a retail store that doesn't take any information for clients. Okay, let's look at the Do Action menu and what that does. This is a Select Button set where you have a new record that you can add. And I'll point out right away, if you go to a screen and there's no new record in here, do not use the buttons on the menus that come up from the bottom of the screen. Let me show you that. These right here, this is an add and minus where you add a record and take one away. Do not use those ever in this application. This application has all the buttons you need right into the Do Action menu where you can do what you have to do in each one of these screens on the application. So a new record button might not be in the screen, and that's telling you that it's a child record other than a parent record and that it's not going to have any new records created in that particular location. But if you do see the record and it's blank or you want to make a new one and there is a new record button, that's what you do. Use the new record button. The next thing is how do you do a find? Find is actually a search, but FileMaker uses the term find to find data. And the, I'm sure that a lot of people use search, but they want to be different. The way it works is you click on the start find and it rotates the screen and it comes up with these little magnifying glasses. Now, all you have to do is put in some kind of information. For example, I'll put the first uh, letter of my name, 
because I'm a customer in the database. But if you wanted to spell out more of it, you could to differentiate between other people with a V that started in their name. Now, you can put VAU and you would only see me, but if you put a V in all alone, you might see more than one record. So let's go ahead and just say, I can either say go from here and do the find, or I can jump back up to the, this menu and say perform the find. And then it comes back and it, this little pop-up comes up and says there's two total records in the application and this is number one of those. And what happens, this creates what's called a record in selection. A record in selection is something that matched whatever the input was, whatever field it was put into. When you do that, you create a set of records that are matching. Now, there's one way to get really messed up if you don't know what you're doing. If you went to the list view for this screen, and I'm going to do that, go to the list view, you're going to see there's only one record in here. Well, what happened, that is the one record in selection. Now, you may have hundreds and hundreds of records in here that you may want to do a find on in a list view. So what you would do if there, you come to a record and you see there's only one or a few, go up to the Do Action menu, come down and do the Show All Records. And in this case, there's only two total records, and one of them is our walk-in client record. Let's go back over here and click on this little piece of paper, and it takes us back into that record. You can see how I have the walk one walk-in client. We've recreated now. There, I'm going to go back up here, and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I want to go back to the record I was just in. Well, I'm going to do prior record, but I could do the first record again, and that would also take me back. Or I can go next record to come back from the first record to this one, or I can use the last record to go all the way to the end of all the records that are current in selection. Let's go back to the first record, and you can see the data reappears for the first record. Now, the next thing we're going to be covering is the UDF fields. What are UDF fields? If I click over here, you'll see that I have UDF fields, and what they are, there's a title field and an input field. The top one is the title field, and the bottom one is an input field. Why would I do something like that? Well, what happens if I don't have a field up here and you need one? Maybe there's something in there where somebody wants to say, uh, I need a license number for something on a car. You could type in the title field and you could say customer's license number. Then you'd put the license number in there by popping up the keyboard and adding that information. So this is what is called a UDF field. User defined fields is what they actually are. User defined fields and it explains them right here in the first record. Now, when you receive the application, you may have the example records included in the application. And what I'm telling you what you should do is do what I call an overwrite. You basically take your data that you want to put in here and just overwrite the information that is currently in here and put your own in there. That way, you don't have this record hanging around. And even if you do that on any screen, for example, if you do it in the parent screen, any records that are in child screens will reflect whatever change you make up here where the name would be added. And you may, if you have to, you may be able to delete those records if you need to. And I'll explain as we go through the screens which screens can be deleted. Okay. The next thing you're going to do is you can see in here that I have an address. When you have an address in these fields right here, you can use the map. And depending on the type of business you are, if you have a service and retail thing where you actually do services for people. This will give you a map that you can go out to that actual location where you're going to do an install or whatever. Say you sell appliances and you have appliances and you do the installs for them. This gives you the ability to create a map capture and use this or and or if you log in, there's usually a login on the screen. Uh, for example, if I come over here and I just pull the edge of the screen, yeah, I'm gonna try it again, pull the edge of the screen, I can sign in and if you have uh, Google uh, Maps, then you can go ahead and sign into your own account. That will give you the ability to save maps and also take your maps that you have and pick one of those to be shown on the screen. So that's something you can do. Uh, to get it back, all you need to do is click off of it and you get the map back. And of course it does when you sign in, includes other uh, features and functions that it will be allowed on your map once you log in. For example, the little guy you can drop on the road so you can see the street map that is included when you actually sign in. Okay, let's go back and just click anywhere off of the map. It'll disappear. The next thing I'm going to show you is this right here for money symbols. No matter where you are in the world, there's 53 different money symbols that are available to you. That way you don't have to go find a thing or, or 
use the dollar sign from the US, you got all these different money symbols for different countries around the world where you can put your own money symbol in. What's nice about this is you do it one time and it's global. Any place in the application where a money symbol is needed will be added. The last thing we're going to cover in this tutorial is the map button down on the company side. The map button now is for this address where you might want to contact or go to the business related thing depending upon the type of business you have. For obviously if you were selling office equipment and you were going to go to do inst installation you would have to have the business location. And then you would have your contact up here as far as the person uh, or the primary person at that business where you would have that information and you would go to their business. Now we're going to go to the next tutorial and in that tutorial we're going to start to cover setting up the inventory. Thank you.